Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio, and good to be talking to you again. A lot of you guys have been shooting me little notes like, where'd you go, Rob? Where'd you go? And uh, the, the, the truth is, <laughs> I was taking a break. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, I have several radio stations. Well, during the summer, we have a couple people available, so we're running some big shows One's called She Said, He Said, and another one's called Paradigm Chimes, and and then uh, we're doing a little blurb with another guy um, called uh, Short and Sweet, and uh, was doing a lot of Arizona talk radio, but uh, kind of had to, uh, it's just getting, uh, burning the candles at too many ends here, and uh, yes, I ne- neglected uh, RV talk radio, and I thought I'd do kind of something in the middle of the summer here just to... Uh, Kind of acknowledge everybody that, you know, I'm still alive. I'm, I'm, we haven't shut down RV Talk Radio. And there is some things cooking in the world of RV for me and Sherry. And uh, I thought maybe in this show I'd talk about them a little bit. And and it's kind of brainstorming. I'm, I'm thinking out loud and stuff. But uh, uh, before we get going, I do want to make sure and run a, uh, uh, a message from one of our supporters. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Yeah, I, I really like those guys from Ford Refrigeration. Now uh, They have a wonderful website. And if you're having any trouble with your RV refrigerator, check out their website. And uh, maybe even you have to go there and, and uh, get it repaired. But you can actually have it done uh, on site. So check them out. So, yeah, the story uh, I was going to share with you was, uh, well, I'm going to I'm gonna move that a little bit farther in the show. And what I want to do is bellyache a little bit. <laughs> you know me. You guys wouldn't be the same if I didn't bellyache a little bit. But, dear Lord, some of the Internet stuff I'm seeing is driving me crazy. One is uh, uh, his and her Alaska, um, super nice people. But, you know, I guess they bought this four-wheel drive rv i can't remember what they call it excursion or i don't know anyway but and they had a pretty good size one and a pretty good setup and uh i guess their goal was they wanted to get out deeper in the woods and stuff like that but so i caught their last video and they're you know taking this thing for their maiden voyage i believe they're in montana and uh i don't know if if you in their faces it looked like they wanted to say we made a mistake, <laughs> yet, yet they're trying so hard to say, oh, here's the benefits. But they went to definitely smaller and uh, definitely fighting the fact that they can't carry as much of stuff. But uh, you can see it seems like they're struggling to uh, uh, verify that it's the move they wanted to make. But maybe not. I I. I could be reading it wrong but it doesn't I, I i think it's got to grow on them or something but i think they might be a little disappointed <laughs> and uh if you're full timing and going smaller that's hard um and and, uh, and the reason i say that is is i'll be talking about that later in the show but that's 
drives me uh, it just was funny to watch and then uh uh i just incredible is uh constantly you know trying to justify living in the city and the rvs part-time and all the problems that they're having and they're getting more and more complaints and uh, I, I'll give Justin credible credit for the fact that he seems like he follows the rules pretty good, does his best to you know kind of stay stealthy and the whole works. But it's you know the thing is, there's more and more and more people doing this thing, and uh, and I can understand it in a lot of cases. The you know have a job and have a lower overhead, uh, put more money in your wallet definitely makes sense but you know there's just some people that just can't adhere to the rules and regulations and they're ruining it for everyone and that's not i mean it's it's how it is just like the old days up in washington we used to be able to go up to warehouse and go hunting and use the woods and all that stuff until people started throwing garbage around and damaging stuff and staying and you know uh, pretty soon they locked it all up and none of us have access to it at all and uh Boy, if you guys were only around 20, 30, 40 years ago, how many more freedoms we had before a handful of people, just a handful, came along and messed it up for all of us. And, of course, the other thing that drives me crazy to watch is this cheap RV living dude, Bob. Uh, re he's like a giant recruiter. He kind of reminds me of like a cult. And it's like, oh, this is how it's, you know, live better. The solar, here's somebody living on 500 a month. And and come on out. Let's all meet up and RTRs and all that stuff. And, and all that says is like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to get you all in here to justify my lifestyle. And, uh, oh, Lord. And, uh, you know, it looks fun and it's easy going. But it's uh, for those that, are, that might be influenceable, let's say, you know, what you really need to listen to is some common sense. Get a job. Yeah, get a job. And earn your way to this. And and some people can find really cool maybe mobile jobs or, or like traveling nurses and stuff. And, and then you can have the best of both worlds where you could use an RV for your job, make lots of money, put it away, get a bigger rig, maybe retire early. Um, you know, or buy that first house. It's really okay to own a house. It really is. And uh, if you can, if you have the opportunity to be able to buy a house, you should go for it. It's it's um, it's a neat opportunity, uh, especially when you're looking at raising a family and all that stuff. And of course, the other thing I'm watching is, of course, the Freedom Theory and their new little newborn. And I don't know. One thing is. Driving around in the back seat with your wife in the back seat, that kind of drives me, would drive me crazy, but I'm kind of old, old school. But uh, at the same time, I don't know, it looked like they're kind of struggling. If you look at them carefully, kind of like, yeah, we love traveling, we love this lifestyle, but oh my God, we got a baby now. And uh, you can kind of see it in their eyes. They want so much to say, you know what, we've had enough of this stuff, we need to get a normal life and raise this kid normal. And... Uh, um, I don't know, just my opinion, <laughs> but, um, uh, I don't know. I just can't watch this stuff anymore. Um, well, I have to, <laughs> and, uh, but the only thing that makes sense is watching the, uh, the uh, puppet show thing that makes fun of all these, uh, nomads. And, uh, now granted, there's some really good ones still out there. I, you know, I still enjoy nomadic fanatic. I don't, personally like anytime he goes off subject and stuff but he does good photography and good coverage and yes my phone's going nuts and i apologize um but anyway um uh you got to give him credit for that so uh i still think he should get a job and you know the big thing is enjoy it now because you know things will probably change youtube won't be around forever things will change up um you just who knows what's going to happen but Anyway, uh, there's my latest on that kind of stuff. <laughs> so how's that for an earful? Well, I suppose it's time for me to start thinking about sharing my little bit of a what thinking out loud stuff going on. So here, here's the scenario. And uh, you guys are like, well, Rob, when are you going to start doing? You're not doing that many RV videos and stuff. And the, the reason is, is my RV is up in central Oregon. The thing is, we bought a house. The thing is, 
our RV is gigantic. My truck is got gigantic, and uh, which was perfect for when we were living full time in our RV. Um, but those days are are, are are gone, I think. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so we could say, well, Rob, you're still in your 50s yeah and in 62 to 64 is when sherry retires and and we want to travel again but not necessarily want to give up the house and you know i don't care what you say when you get older things are harder and uh you know dealing with a big old truck and then putting the rv on it and the stress of driving that around and stuff is getting less and less appealing yep so does that mean i get an rv heck no so here, here's the dilemma. So we bought our fifth wheel fairly new because Sherry and I really wanted something reliable and uh, with warranty and stuff. And the problem when you do that is depreciation on, uh, and we had to finance it, a depreciation on a, on a, our, a fifth wheel like that is quite enormous. And so basically we're underwater, as I've, I've mentioned before. So uh, we've looked at RVs, and, and I don't want to dish out a bunch of cash. Cash is precious, you know. <laughs> so obviously, you know, uh, you take an RV uh, like that, there's no way that they'll take it without cash to make up the difference of the depreciation. However, um, there is one other option. And if you guys have seen any of my videos and stuff like that, you know I drive a precious, precious commodity. It's a 2002 Ford 110 Dually with the 7.3 liter engine in it, diesel. It's the ultimate pulling machine. And I've had it forever. I've had this thing since 2000, uh, well, almost new. I bought it just with 10,000 miles on it. Anyway, so... It's getting up there, and it runs like a champ. The thing is beautiful. It's good for another. It's over two hundred thousand on it, but it will break three or four hundred thousand easy. I, I don't know why it wouldn't. It's solid. I've never had such a nice truck. And of course, I don't want to get rid of it. And of course, I was paid for. It. But uh, the fifth wheel has been sitting around a lot in one spot, and that bothers me. Uh, you know the old rule, uh, an RV not being used can be just as bad as using it a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, if we wait till we retire, it's like that thing's a gigantic beast. And Lord knows how well the truck will be doing five years from now. So, yep, you know, we're thinking trading in the RV and the truck because the other uh, when we have talked to dealerships and stuff, they said, well, you know, your deal is possible where you could do a trade-in and, and, and they wanted to put cash down. And uh, I said, we don't want to put cash down. And they said, well, if you sell your truck, we could talk. Well, back then, it was like, forget it. But now, kind of thinking it might be, while the thing's still a gem, to trade it in and uh, get into something like a uh oh i don't know a class c 22 24 foot um as small as we can get down to that we can park in the side of our house and uh uh do more weekend warrior stuff and, and get in and, because we're not getting much photography done or um you know not just you know video photography but still photography and stuff thing is is uh down here um it's always hot as a bear and i have a and then that beast i can't park in the side of my house it's just too big and um uh, yeah so that's uh kind of what we're looking at so in september i'm heading up to central oregon and uh we're doing that to check in sherry's folks and go check on the rv but we're bringing the rv back we're bringing it home I may have to store it a little bit. And between now and September when we do that, Sherry and I are going to start hitting the old shopping, RV shopping situation. And I'd like to get something that was a year old or two years old. One is it knocks off the depreciation a little bit. Sometimes some people have bought a rig, put a lot of extras into it, and then a year or two later sold it with very little mileage on it, and that's kind of what the deal I'm looking for. 
and uh, at the same time find a place that's willing to take my RV and my truck as the down payment. So, crossing my fingers, I may be, it may be wishful thinking, maybe not, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you don't know unless you try. And uh, that would be ideal scenario for us. And yes, we'd still have an RV payment, but at least it's an RV payment of an RV we could use every weekend and easily get in, get out, don't have to set things up, don't have to worry about the trailers, don't have to be humongous, I can easily... Uh, and you go, okay, well, that's going to take you down to one car. Yes. I hardly do any driving now, but if I really need to, I can drive to Class C just a few blocks away just to get groceries or something. No big deal. Uh, it's just not that far away. Uh, other than that, I very rarely drive my truck around here. Um, it's just how it is. So life is changing, and that's what people don't realize is life changes. Just like the youngins that are out there and these millennials all going out, and they don't realize how life is going to change, change, change. And, uh, uh, you know, so, or maybe they do know it's going to change, and they know something we don't. <laughs> yeah, I kind of doubt it. Anyway, uh, that's kind of what we're thinking out loud, and, 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 uh, here's kind of what we have in mind that we want to start doing with an RV down here in Arizona. Part of the problem when you're living in Arizona is obviously the heat. The other thing is, is what places there are to go in an RV usually requires uh, reservations and some prior planning. Unfortunately, me and Sherry have always been throughout our lives, even though we've had to change a little bit, We'd like to be spontaneous. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why we like to downsize our RV to be more of a weekend, three-dayer kind of warriors uh, up to a week or week and a half when we do places and not, cons not go insane by having something too small, but at the same time that f and comfortably fits me and Sherry and the dog. You know how that goes. You gotta have room for the dog. And, uh, you know, I still want the amenities of uh, being able to cook, a refrigerator, don't have to be gigantic, a comfortable bed. That's the hardest. And, of course, when you're in the RV, at least somehow to be comfortable to be able to watch TV or something like that without being in a boxy kind of thing. So that's going to be the hardest spot right there. Um, but, you know, having the restroom and basic showers and stuff like that cool that's really all i want i don't have to get too high tech do i want solar uh, enough uh, as long as i have a generator and maybe an extra battery uh i i don't need to get too sophisticated but there are so many things down here in arizona that i love to do weekend warrior stuff on and i don't want to pay for motels and when i do want to pay for motels most of the time i would like to take my dog and i can't take my dog and uh, my hardest thing i got to deal with is heat so when we have an RV like that um, and we are boondocking or going out in the woods or anything like that or want to uh, go somewhere where there's a casino, maybe Sherry and I want to go in the casino for a little while, can we keep the dog cool? Um, may have to you know, be in places that have RV hookups or at least basic electricity so I can run the air conditioners and stuff because... You know, I don't care what they say. I have not seen a good solar system without going totally elaborate um, that could run an AC for a prolonged amount of time. So, yeah, we've got, you know, more things down south to go check out. We haven't seen nor uh, New Mexico at all. There's always lots to do over towards uh, San Diego. And there's so many mining towns and little gems around here in Arizona up and up north that, uh, gosh, I don't, I don't and, uh, and even with Lake Powell, I know you guys are going, don't you own a boat too, Rob? Yeah, we're going to get rid of that too. Why? Because it's too big. And uh, anyway, it just seems like everything changed after we bought a house. Not, and it's not about the money as it is convenience and how we want to do things and so if i had a class c i'd love to go back down to like a 16 to 18 foot boat that i could trailer behind it that would be cool 
I love little boats like that because they're easy, they're dependable, they're easy, maneuverable, they're not a big pain in the butt. I mean, it's like, anyway, just like a big motorhome is one sophisticated electronics machine that just wants to break constantly. Well, big boats are that way too. So yeah, big changes that we're thinking about. This is all thinking out loud stuff. It will be interesting and to see how much of it we can make come true. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, a lot of you guys are like, well, what, what are you going to do with Outdoor Travel Channel stuff? Well, gosh, that's never ending. Right now, we're just kind of experimenting with a couple of fun little things. I think we did some things with casinos. We've been doing some Arizona Living videos. Um, we finished up a big interview with RV Talk Radio. Um, at, I can't remember who I interviewed. But anyway, they were a really good interview. Thought that would be a good place to take a break. And uh, this is just like the middle of the summer, just kind of let you know we're still alive. And we'll pick up the episodes again in the September, October time, which is also the time that we're going to be uh, uh, going after pursuing this new RV ID idea. Uh, once you got, you know, a wonderless in your blood, you'll just never get it out. And we knew that even buying a house. But we certainly don't want to do full timing anymore in an RV. Uh, I don't care what you say. Living in RV parks and stuff like that is just as bad, if not worse. And just, you know, may as well be in a neighborhood. Uh, at least here you got some privacy. And at least here I got a place where my dog could run free. And, uh, you know, uh, I can even put out a little swimming pool in the front of my RV because they didn't want standing water anywhere and things like that. There's so many things that just like, I am so tired of being on everybody else's pieces of property and rules that that's one of the reasons why we really, really wanted to get back into a home, which we're very, no regrets, no regrets whatsoever. And we're having lots of fun with gardening too and things like that, which are amazing things here in Arizona. So that's the scoop. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, love to hear you guys' feedback. Say hello and make sure you give us comments. Uh, I'm sure I've got everybody riled up. Uh, I don't know if it's just me about some of the stuff that I see on the internet. Um, is it, uh, I used to think it was jealousy. Now I'm just going, you know, I think it's just, I, I just think some of the stuff is totally insane. I really do think a lot of people make decisions like RV love. They decided to sell their RV, get another one. And I think the only reason they're doing it is they needed a new story. I really think that they're doing it more for their channel and more for their viewers than they are really using common sense for themselves. And those guys go absolutely nuts with memberships and things like that. I don't care what you say. Anything that they talk about in their membership stuff is free on YouTube anywhere. And it's like, it's just all these gimmicks of people finding some way to get into your wallet. And I go, yeah, it's your business and, and all that stuff. I understand that. If I want to donate to them, that's my business. Yes, it is. Yep, sure is. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe, you know, being a viewer and a donating isn't as bad as being out there and being a beggar. <laughs> so I, I'll put it that way. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. Um, gosh, what else is going on? Uh, Phil Sears. Got to say hi to you. Uh, I know you always listen to our show. Uh, and uh, I had another gentleman named Tom ask about, well, what, what are you doing on RV Talk Radio? And I told him, well, I've just taken a month or two off. And if I announce it, everybody's like, you know, give me a bunch. I just need to do it and, and uh, get through the summer. Got so many things going on. Uh, obviously, you guys know we have the uh, radio stations. And I'm going to talk about it just for a minute is Good Talk Radio which is an internet radio station. Uh, we play RV Talk Radio, all the main episodes on there. And uh, so if you just go to uh, goodtalkradio.com, look at the schedule, you can catch any of our old uh, um, RV Talk Radio uh, shows there. Also, we put, all of, we're, we put all of our RV Talk Radio shows on Spreaker now. So if you don't know what Spreaker is, it's... Not speaker, is Spreaker, S-P-R. Uh, we put all of our episodes, all of our podcasts are up there. And uh, that's a great place to go. And, of course, now all these shows now are on iHeart. RV Talk Radio is on iHeart Radio. It's on Spotify. 
um, iTunes, TuneIn, the whole works. So, yeah, it's not like the show's dead. It's been running. Uh, just different sources have been pulling on it. So, uh, but yeah, it's time to get a few more episodes. Plus, you know, a summer check-in with everybody is kind of kind of cool. And uh, uh, hopefully you've got a chance to see some of our other shows going on, some really fun stuff. We've been working with some people over in the East Coast for a show called She Said, He Said. Funnier in heck, oh my God. And then uh, I have another gal from that same crew that took over my Paradigm Chimes who specializes in Law of Attraction. And uh, so, uh, and uh, of course, I'm into paradigm and paradigm shifting, all that stuff. So there's some great episodes coming out every week on both of those shows. And I think you'd enjoy those. So let's change the subject. So one of the things I was going to tell you guys about in Arizona here is we are in our Richter scale heat. So uh, I think this week we've been uh, averaging 110 up to 114 degrees every day. And um, it is going to come down a little bit and stuff. But this is our winter time, guys. And so a lot of you people, it's so funny. It's like, oh, that's terrible. I hate it, whatever. But I still got to remind you guys, we have nine months of summer. So this is our sacrifice. Just like when you guys are in your up north and stuff, you're just like, okay, let's get through the winter. And spring will come in summer and we can go camping again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a little different here. And that's what makes it complicated for Sherry and I with our RV is uh, the temperatures here is a challenge. Uh, storing something in this kind of temperature is an issue. And that's why the fifth wheel is up in central Oregon right now. And uh, well, we have the same problem with the boat too. It's sitting out on the side of the house in this really extreme heat not good for it so uh it's covered and all that kind of stuff but it's still uh oh my gosh so uh, uh arizona has got its own set of problems it's like if i had something stored up in washington i constantly was constantly raining or is it stored under a pine tree or or things like that you know mold and things like that all issues and so every region's got their problems along with critters and all kinds of other things of how you store your rv and an rv not being used is not necessarily good for it either because it sits there and rusts and um anyway so yeah it's just frustrating so hopefully uh finally i mean sherry and i've been kind of like what are we gonna do this is uh we love our rv to death and when we use it we just love it i mean it's like monstrous and comfortable but uh, not really what we need anymore. So it's really, um, I love to have it whenever it was convenient, but um, we want something where it's just, we get home, Sherry gets home from work, and we throw a few clothes in a bag and hop in the RV, throw the dog in, and it's really almost ready to go, very little effort, and uh hop in and just start driving down the road, whether we want to go to San Diego, whether we want to go up the Grand Canyon, or whether we just want to go to um, yeah, a tomb, uh, Tombstone, or maybe we want to shoot over to the next state over at New Mexico, and uh, Sedona, and all those kind of, so many places. Plus, we get some really beautiful places up in Flagstaff to check out. So, uh, uh, I don't and and not have to pay for motels, of course. And having something small, I can actually use some of the campgrounds because what I got now is just, I can't even can't even talk about campgrounds. Can't can't do it. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if we can pull this off, and we'll keep our listeners involved about how that's going. It may be not the right time yet. Who knows? I don't know. But um, the other thing I was going to tell you a little bit about a trip we took to. Uh, Las Vegas, and, and it was kind of, and the only word I have for that is wow. So let me let me tell you a little bit about it. Well, Sherry and I decided we need to get the heck out of here, so we thought we'd take an adult break. I mean, truly adult, which we mean, you know, we're in Arizona. We're only five hours away from Vegas. And yes, we passed through Vegas with the RV, and we've stayed at the Oasis and all that, but we wanted to do the fantasy let's get you know so we got a place we went to the mirage there's better places but uh, it was a good deal and we went on a sunday monday night thing 
uh, which gave us some really good rates. It was like the base rate was like $69 a night, plus you got to pay their taxes and all that stuff. It was more like $80, $90 a, a, a night. So anyway, but anyway, we decided we're going up there, going to take a chunk of change, like a thousand bucks, which we did. And uh, we uh, stopped by the Hoover Dam over, uh, I think it was a Hoover Dam Lodge, I think it's called, and uh, had lunch there and actually uh, threw a couple of dollars in their machines and did all right. And uh, uh, then headed up right over to San, uh, right over to Las Vegas and uh, wasn't too bad of a nightmare. We let her phone kind of figure out how to get in there. Have to pay for the garage parking now, I guess. Uh, no free parking even for the locals. But once we got through all that and we had our little Mazdas, it made it a lot easier. Uh, never touched the car until we went home. So we get in there, um, a little bit of, you know, definitely like herding cattle stuff. But uh, once we got in there and got our, into our room, it was a decent room. I, mean, I can't complain at all. And uh, went down to the casino, and Sherry was all pumped. She's been studying, uh, if you notice on our channel, on uh, Outdoor Travel Channel, we've been learning how to play video poker and stuff like that a little bit. So we're really going in with the adult mode of just let's have fun, let's drink, let's be adults and just have fun. And by God, we get out to the casino. She gets to the one machine. We kind of stay together when we play. And she nailed $1,000 payoff right off the bat. Oh, my God. Did that change everything about the vacation? I mean, we had 1000 with us. This meant we can just play to our heart's content. We could try machines we never tried before. Spend a little bit more than we normally would. Experiment and just have some fun and let our hair down. And uh, by gosh, if we didn't, we're playing like crazy and up and down and up and down and hundreds flying here, hundreds flying there. Walked down to the Cosmo. We did uh, get to see the, uh, the fountain over at uh, Bellagio. And then I uh, went down to Cosmopolitan because they can let, you can videotape in there, believe it or not. And uh, by gosh, we didn't win another eight or nine hundred dollars, I think it was. And uh, of course, we were spending like crazy. We have no intention of trying to save money. We just wanted to play, have fun, get free drinks, and that's exactly what we did. We didn't go to bed till four o'clock that morning. <laughs> Never have done that in years, decades. This is we ever did anything like that. And, of course, we get up the next morning, and we actually we didn't sleep in as late as we thought we would. And we were kind of dragging a little bit the second day. And, of course, we were donating a lot more of that money back, uh, which was okay because it's, it's money that we planned on losing. And uh, we just wanted to have fun. And, uh, by the way, the one thing we really noticed was food is not cheap. Um, you know, like a burger would be $19, you know. Uh, so, yeah, food wasn't cheap, but we still found pretty practical places to eat. So even that was under control, wasn't out of sand. What would like to have done a real fancy thing. But uh, instead of doing a Sunday night, Monday night, I think I want to add one more day, which would give us more time to uh, go look around at some of the things. We would like to do the big wheel, the big Ferris wheel they got. And I uh, would have liked to have gone to Fremont and stuff, but... Uh, we felt like we were kind of pressed for time a little bit. Uh, we did go see the volcano, the Mirage Volcano, and we did make a video of a little bit of some of the things we saw. I mean, we did videotape a couple of Sherry's and my uh, winnings on the slot machines. and Yeah, but I had a really good time. And, and the bottom line was just being adults and letting our hair down. Now, a lot of people don't have the budget to do something like what we did. But the big part was right off the bat, we got extra budget. So that's what really made it fun. Um, and then, of course, on the way home, we actually decided not to eat in the morning at the Mirage because of craziness and just got in our car, drove an hour to the Boulder Lodge uh, place there and had lunch there and, and also played in their casino just a little bit and won another 100 bucks on the way home. So we were probably down three hundred dollars came home with um with a lot of the money we had when we left so that's a good day <laughs> so, some people are well i just don't go there at all it'd be great but hey, that was just something we really enjoyed really let our hair down really went all out 
and even got to do some really heavy duty uh, uh, gambling, if you want to put it that way, in a way that we would normally not get to do because we had the extra budget. And we had a blast. And and really, by the time we got home, it was almost depressing because you know everything's such a high there, and Bing, 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 and people and stuff and and things to do. And all of a sudden, you get back home, and all of a sudden, you're going, "Whoa!" <laughs> it takes, and luckily, Sherry took an extra day off for us to just kind of hang around the house and uh, compress, you might say, just let things out because uh, uh, that's a lot of wildness and craziness for two old people like her and I, but we had a blast. So I really recommend Vegas is still fun. It's still, you're going to be throwing money around. And if you don't mind having drinks and stuff, I drank more on that because I wasn't driving or nothing. I didn't get drunk or anything. I was just constantly drinking though. I had more mixed drinks than I've had in an entire year, and they were all free, absolutely free in a way. I mean, nothing's free in Vegas, but uh, had a good time and uh, walked around a little bit. It's definitely really warm there, too, just like it is here in Arizona, but uh, just had a good time. And I highly recommend if you just need adult timing, just need to be an adult go to Vegas. And of course, there's the shows. Go check out some of the shows. And if you're really into some really good places to eat dinner, huh, uh, just bring a, you know, make sure you bring a roll of cash with you because you're going to need it. Well, I was uh, watching some of uh, Dan and Jen Nevada's uh, videos. Apparently, they got burglarized. I don't know the whole story, but and they're up in the Oregon and Washington area and they're getting into the more populated areas and stuff like that. And, you know, that's the one thing that's not surprising me is <clears throat> with the growth of the RV stuff and all these videos on it, somebody's going to, well, I'm sure a lot of them are going to start getting wise to the fact that RVers might be good victims. And that's probably not good. But uh, if you kind of think about it, could be very easy targets somebody who really wants to um, take something that we we have uh, are not they're not stupid people some are really stupid but I mean others are not and uh, once they start kind of figuring out that RVers are kind of people that park their rig take off and go do things come back they kind of easily can figure out the pattern of travelers and could very easily, uh, you know, these RVs are not the most secure things in the world. They're pretty easy to get into and uh, uh, really causes some havoc. And uh, when you get into the cities and stuff like that, you know, there's a lot more hardship, you might want to say, uh, in numbers in places like that. And uh, they're going to figure it out. And then as uh, some of us folks that are kind of rednecks <laughs> come out of the uh, woodwork and show up into places with higher population, we're not um, as savvy as we should be uh, to prevent ourselves from getting victimized. <laughs> and uh, I don't see that getting any better. And uh, I... I don't know of any, you know, I've had all shapes and sizes of RVs from motorhomes, 40 footers to, uh, they're, uh, they're not much of a fortress. And so, uh, um, they can be pretty easy to get into. And, um, a crowbar really quite easily could get into one of those doors. Uh, there's just nothing there. There's no meat behind it. And uh, I got a feeling it's going to get to be a fact more and more, especially towards the cities and stuff. But it can happen anywhere because people are going to start figuring out uh, because of our videos and the things that we put out there that you're going, you know, these guys would be easier victims than us trying to break into houses that have alarm systems and stuff like that and neighbors and um you know, when people are RVers, they're coming and going all the time. Nobody really knows each other that much and don't necessarily understand the traffic going in and out somebody else's RV. Uh, I could see some real issues. And I'm, I I had those feelings when I was RVing with Sherry that uh, 
I wasn't giving her the most secure situation. Even when I was in decent RV parks, it was like a lot of strange things. And, and there's some very interesting characters that are in these RV parks. <laughs> so I uh, don't know what to say other than uh, awareness is really important. Complacency is not good to get into. Um, watching the pattern of what you do and how you act and, and how uh, your RV is, uh, is portrayed uh, when someone's, let's say, watching you and trying to see what your pattern is and seeing when their opportunity is to get into your RV and your personal stuff. Uh, I think, you know, of course, you know, you go to places like Walmarts and stuff like that when you're overnighting and stuff, uh, um, there's a good opportunities there for someone that has a evil plan <laughs> to get into your rig. So security, I think is becoming to be a bigger deal. Of course, being a, um, uh, do you weaponize or not? Or, uh, is that a good idea or not? I personally am not against that um if you don't care to have a weapon or something like that maybe at least a you know pepper spray or something and then uh your most acute your most uh valuable things um might want to find that ultimate little hiding spot in the rv where you know when rv you know, if someone's breaking into your rig they're typically not in they're typically in a hurry they want to get in and out so they go for the easy stuff so uh, hide those precious things in places that most people don't have the time to go look. Even if it's under those lift-up beds and stuff. Well, uh, of course, if people know RVs real well, that's probably the first place they'd look. But um, I know all of us have little places in our RVs that have there'd be good little hiding spots for stuff. Or, you know, take a coffee can and put it in a shelf and make it look like coffee where you can actually have more precious things in it because nobody's like, well, it's just coffee. <laughs> you know, who knows? Um, but yeah, I uh, uh, I know it's a pain. And of course, the complications of insurance between homeowners and vehicle insurance can be um, drive you crazy. Just absolutely drive you crazy. You don't know what to do. And... Uh, uh, Let's say we don't find out how good our insurance is until we have to use it. And then we find out, oh, God, this sucks. So I mean, my hearts go out to those guys. Uh, um, is it Jen and Dan Nevada? And I understand the hardships are going through and the probably frustration that, you know, um, the cops come along and it's like, oh, God. It's like I know they'd, they'd like to solve things as much as the next person. But at the same time, it's like we don't have a chance to find these people. <clears throat> it's uh and but i i think the hardest thing for policemen is to show uh compassion uh when they see so much negative and that's something you and i probably aren't used to all the time is so much negative and uh so they carry it and portray it probably a little different than say we do as victims so patience and uh you know to be a cop, no matter what, you're in the sense of being somebody to help the community. And uh, their hearts are in the right place. They just may not portray themselves as well as they should. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment on that and uh, hope, hope those guys are the best to recover everything. And I know um, uh, when it takes your privacy away and you feel like you've been victimized, it's hard to get over that. <laughs> Well, help me out here because I need to understand something. Uh, apparently, I just don't understand all this, but what is the deal with people converting buses? Um, I guess, you know, uh, I, I, <laughs> speechless. Why do you want to live in a converted bus? Um sounds like a lot of work. That's one. I, I think a lot of people just do it so they can have something for their YouTube channel. But what's wrong with this owning an RV that works already? <laughs> That's my first question. And uh, why do you want to spend so much time converting a bus when you could be traveling, I guess? Or uh, I don't know. Um, 
And typically these buses got a lot of mileage miles on them because, you know, they're available because they're done using them. I, I'm not getting it. I, I, I guess I just need to, uh, I know I, I'm just watching so many videos lately of these people and I, I kind of jump around and try to catch different ones. I try not to watch the same ones all the time, but I don't know. Um, I know a lot of guys that, or people that maybe they don't have a whole lot of dough and, and they're younger and they're trying to get out and be this nomadic kind of people and the only way to, and they don't have jobs so they're trying to get their YouTube channels going and selling stuff and and um, looking for donations and and, um, and really they just need to oh, get a job <laughs> um, now there's others, you know, there's, there's millennials out there that are maybe uh, working nurses, traveling nurses and stuff, and they're using the RVs and, and all that stuff. Um, works great, but they normally have normal RVs. And then, uh, um, you know, I, I drives me crazy to watch the Bob guy on cheap RVing stuff, but there's a lot of folks out there with fixed incomes and stuff, and you've heard me in other shows saying, uh, I truly understand how they're making life out of the lemons, you know, and uh, so they'll buy a van or a cheap trailer and something like that and uh, live a nomadic life because they're only bringing in $500, to $1,000 a month on disability or Social Security, divorces, uh, you know, a widow, uh, medical issues, stuff like that, and, you know, they can keep their overhead down enough so I can afford groceries and medical costs and things like that makes total sense. And, uh, um, but then I see the other gray side of people using RVs as a way to live homeless <clears throat> and which is causing a whole nother problem. And, uh, don't know exactly like the, uh, how to solve some of this. Other than, you know, the big cities are getting just too damn expensive to live in. Uh, Seattle, Portland, uh, California. Um, I mean, the houses cost. Like, you know, Sherry and I got a very comfortable house for those of you kind of, mention, you know, can see some of our videos. And we paid basically a quarter million for it, 20, you know, 250000 approximately. <clears throat> a house like this in Seattle over in San Diego and stuff like that. They're like 700,000 pushing a million dollars. And it's like, how can a normal working class people, which are getting less and less, afford this kind of stuff? So it's pushing people out. And so they're looking at RVs and alternative ways to live. Um, but the bus conversion, getting back to that, is like, I... Um, I guess if you're a handy person and like to work on projects and stuff like that, I guess that could be fun. But uh, I think it'd be funner just to kind of keep you an RV that's already kind of designed as an RV, maintain that and keep it going, and, and maybe enjoy what the fact the RV could do for you. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I uh, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm easily confused. I just don't get it sometimes. Um, I get the RV world. I get the travel. I get the uh, um, nomadic stuff. I, I get it. But some of it is like just totally crazy and insane. And uh, uh, a lot of these people uh, that are making videos are the ones that are kind of like, uh, I know. And the, the funny part is the ones that are sitting there begging for money or trying to, it's, the thing is people are sending it to them. And of course, in the note comments, I'll see a lot of times like, well, I choose to. And that's great. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's wonderful that you choose to send these people money. Um, and between that and maybe watching a person like, and I'll go back to Nomadic Fanatic, there's no doubt he's a wanderer. Um, but he does really good videos. And so, uh, um, Power to them. How long can that last? I mean, what's a guy like that going to be like in 20 years from now? <laughs> Is it still going to be... <laughs> Maybe he can buy himself a bus. 
I don't know. Um, it, the, 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 I, I guess these are the people who are living for the now, and that's great. Um, but I tell you, when you get our age, you kind of look back and you go, boy, I wish I wasn't living for a now. I was kind of thinking about what was going to be like now uh, up, up to this point 20 years ago and prepared for it a little more. Um, we did a little, but not as good as I wish I could have. There's a lot of things I would have done different if I was able to. You know how that go hindsight. <clears throat> Some of these people, I, I'm pretty sure, don't have any hindsight. <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't. I, I I I don't get it. And and so yeah, if you guys have comments like, why would you want to convert an old school bus? Why? Um, I'm sure that when you really start playing the numbers, you'll be spending just as much money trying to get all the customized things to fit into a school bus, as opposed to just buying an RV that's already. An RV would be kind of, I think, significant. But I I don't know. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I I st still I I can't um, get over when I watch some of these videos the, the shock of of people that are traveling and doing these videos of how uh, they're uh, you know surprised that the cities are the way they are or whatever. And it's like, that's real life people. And sometimes I feel like the travelers sometimes forget. And But the thing is, is some of these RV parks now are getting so busy and so full and bringing all these characters that um, you shouldn't be surprised about city life when you see RV parks that are um, you know big and busy and stuff like that bring in all kinds of uh, interesting characters. And um, it's changed a lot. Uh, the first time me and Sherry traveled in 2006, as opposed to now, oh my gosh, what a difference. Um, some things better, some things worse. I think the worst part is being spontaneous is really tough unless you got a smaller rig. And that's kind of one of the reasons why Sherry and I are looking at going with something smaller because we're not fitting into this controlled environment of going someplace and making reservations and stuff because we never know. It's hard for us two or three weeks from now to make plans of making reservations somewhere because it's just our nature. And so being a little bit of, of I, don't, I don't think the word nomadic, but being able to be spontaneous and not have to follow into all the rules of RV parks where uh, you have to make reservations and and uh, certain times a year, it's like almost impossible. I need a place where a uh, rig that I could easily pull in the backside of a casino and park overnight. Um, occasionally use a, uh, a Walmart, but I, I don't really like those. Um, is kind of something that might work good for us to be spontaneous. But at the same time, uh, I'm not buying a bus. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> But I'd sure like to understand that concept. What's the real reason why people are doing that? Uh, as opposed to, there's so many RVs out there that you can get pretty good deals on them. And wheeling and dealing, why not just buy one of those than one of these buses that you want to convert? It just sounds like such a hassle. And uh, I think it's more for the... Uh, purposes of making YouTube videos of as they're converting it as if anything. So, yeah, just my two cents worth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just got to say something. I guess I shouldn't, but that's uh, why we call this RV Talk Radio. Well, I'm getting to the end of my hour, and I want to thank you guys for listening. I uh, uh, This is kind of like a midterm thing where I, I'm uh, we're kind of taking the summer off and because we got so many things in the works. And Arizona's really hot, so we tend to be more, uh, I know all you guys are up north all gallivanting around now, but in Arizona, this is our winter time, so we're kind of chilling. And so as soon as September, October comes, that's when we start getting out and about. And, uh, uh, you know, in the front of this show, we were, I explained to you kind of the things we're working on, which will really change the concept of our outdoor travel channel. Um, in the meantime, we're just kind of having fun this summer, uh, experimenting with 
different kinds of videos and stuff like that, but uh, much a lot more travel videos and things like that will be occurring. There is a uh, Central Oregon coming up and us bringing the RV back. Uh, be interesting to see if we have any issues with the RV for it almost been sitting almost a year. Um, we you know used it a couple of times and all that stuff, but it hasn't rolled. Uh, it would be interesting to see if we have any issues, but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but, you know how that goes. I also want to remind you that you can listen to all of our episodes of RV Talk Radio at rvtalkradio.com, or you can go to Spreaker now. We now upload our videos automatically to Spreaker. And of course, if you're a podcast listener, we these are all registered podcasts that we do. Um, Arizona Talk Radio, RV Talk Radio, all those stuff. Just uh, go into your podcast software on your cell phone, type in RV Talk Radio, and there will be, because we're in iTunes and TuneIn and uh, Spotify and iHeartRadio. And, and, of course, all of our shows are up on Good Talk Radio. And uh, feel free to catch uh, some of the older uh, shows we've done. Some of them are just uh, provoking. Other ones are just kind of funny. Um, but yeah, we, we pretty much will talk about anything here, but try to be semi respectful. Uh, we're not cursing people and all that stuff. We just a little bit, an old timer trying to understand the young timers. <laughs> That's pretty much what it's all about. Anyway, I want to thank everybody for listening. I appreciate all the nice notes we've been getting. Uh, now you know what's going on. Uh, I urge everybody to enjoy RVing. Go get yourself an RV if you don't have one yet. If you do, be safe. Use common sense and don't buy a bus. <laughs> anyway, guys, take care. Until next time, bye now. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Uh, appreciate you letting us have our summer break. We will be catching up with you soon. Don't worry. Anyway, please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the world. We appreciate it. Bye now.